Testing, one, two, check, one, two. Making sure that you can see me and you can hear me. And while I'm getting things prepared here, I got one more thing I gotta do. That one. Okay, so if you can say hello, I'll be with you in just a second here. Just trying to get this set up. Give me one minute. Let's go here. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me, you can see me. Hello everybody. Just trying to get everything ready. <laughs> it's been a crazy morning. So hello to everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're gonna be talking about some rock licks. And actually, just to kind of get you set up here, um, I've got a new course coming out. It's called the Rock Licks course. There's actually a limited DVD version one of this. So I wanted to let you know about this. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more, there's gonna be a link up in the chat for you to check this out. You can see what's going on. And then for today and the rest of the workshops, let me talk about that quick. So I've got a workshop obviously right now. I've got one on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Monday the following week, we're gonna be talking all about licks learning about licks, how to approach them, how to play them, how to make them better, all kinds of different things like that. So there's a jam track that goes with this and the jam track is available in the Facebook group. So if you head over to the Rock Licks group, there's gonna be a, a link somewhere on here. You can download the, the track that I'm using. I wrote it, just this little track this morning and we're gonna use that throughout the rest of these sessions, including today. Hey Stan, uh, let me see who we got here real quick. Steve is here, and Stan is here, and Clayton is here, Mark is here. Hey Mark, Somber Von Plague is here. Uh, Rin Tin is here, Michael is here, Joel is here. Uh, Michael Bay is here, how you doing buddy? Jeff is here again, nice to see you Jeff. Uh, Linda Smith Robinson is here, hello everybody. So let's go ahead and get started here. So basically what I wanted to let you know here is that today we're gonna to be giving away five memberships for the Guitar Zoom membership, okay? So basically what's gonna happen here, and I need to read my notes to make sure I don't screw you up on this, but a little bit later in this, this live session, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you, you can post it anywhere that you're watching this right now, whether it's on Instagram, uh, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you are, what you're gonna do is you're gonna post a hashtag Guitar Zoom, don't do it now. You're gonna post a hashtag guitar zoom and you're gonna tell us why you want the membership. And all you gotta do is post that. What we're gonna do is somebody on the other side of this, not me, because I'm looking at you right now, is gonna pick five winners and you're gonna get a guitar zoom membership and it's that easy, okay? Hey Brett, hey Dennis. Uh, so we're gonna be doing that after a little while, but right now to celebrate the new release of my Rocklix course in the uh, special DVD edition, all that sort of thing, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and get started. So today what we're doing is we're talking about basic essential ideas to make your licks better, to make them work better. And again, we're going to be talking, hey, uh, evening for Martin over there. So wherever you are, Martin, good evening to you. We're going to talk about how to make your licks better. And something that I struggled with when I was younger was that I would learn how to play lots of different things, but when it came time to actually practice, I couldn't figure out how to fit the licks I was learning into the stuff I was trying to play over. So imagine you grabbing a, a jam track. Maybe you grab the jam track that I made for you uh, this morning from the Facebook group, which again, there'll be a link for somewhere in the, in the chat. Um, but you, you try and play along with that and your struggle. So what I wanna do today is I wanna talk to you about that a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about tempo. Now the track that I made for you is uh, at 120 beats per minute, okay? So that's what it is. Let me play you just a little bit of this so you can hear what this sounds like. Here we go. It's very, very basic. And I made it basic, obviously, on purpose. So this is traveling at 120 beats a minute, and it's going. 
Uh, hey, Michael. Uh, hey, everybody. Remember, if you are on Facebook, oftentimes you might have to put your name in there, and it's it's a privacy thing through Facebook, and it's awesome that they're trying to give us privacy, but I can't tell who you are because of that. Christopher Rogers is here. Arnold Waldart is here. Ken Johnson is here. Hey, everybody. Martin is here. Martin LaBelle is here. How you doing, buddy? Daniel Tai is here. Awesome. Okay, so let's just start with that. Let's start with the idea right here of what we've got going from A to C sharp. So before we even begin, the first thing we need to do is we need to decide on some things. We know that the tempo is at 120 beats per minute, and believe me, these things are gonna make a really big difference in your approach. So I want you to think about these things a little bit, okay? So we know that it's in the, uh, we know that it's 120 beats per minute. We know that we've got the chords A and C sharp minor, okay? so. If we, and again, I'm not asking you to know all your theory and things like that, but just bear with me right now. So, if I have A and C sharp minor, that could mean I'm either in A major slash C sharp minor, right? So you could use A major pentatonic, or you could use C sharp minor, minor pentatonic as well, right? Now, if you know your modes, and it's okay if you don't, I'm just telling you, that if you knew that kind of information, you might think, okay, well, I know that this is in A major, A Ionian, or it also could possibly be in A Lydian. And again, that's not a conversation I want to get into. I'm just telling you my train of thought. When I, when I see these chords, the first thing I do is I think about the tempo. Then the second thing that I do is once I've defined what the tempo is, uh, I need to decide what scale I'm going to use. What scale options do I have? Now, if I haven't been playing very long, maybe my scale option is simply pentatonic, and I know I can play A major, and I can play C sharp minor, okay? And they're both gonna be interchangeable, okay? So let me show you that real quick. So uh, if I was to play A major or C sharp minor, listen, over either chord, listen. I can play A major pentatonic over both of these chords because they're in the same key. I could play C sharp minor over both of these chords because they're in the same key. Now again, I don't want to confuse you, so if these are conversations that you're, you're not really sure what I'm saying, there's some other things that you might want to consider studying as well. We're, what we're talking about is rock licks, but I want to get us set up so uh, when we get going into the next week, you know what we're talking about, okay? So number one, tempo, 120 beats per minute. That's what I've got. Number two, key. I'm in the key of A major slash C sharp minor, which again, I just explained pentatonic. Diatonic could mean I'm playing A major. <laughs> Okay, and that would be fine. If you know your theory, A major and C sharp minor both fit into A Lydian, so I could play A Lydian. Okay, so just think about those things a little bit, and if some, some of that is stuff you don't know, it's okay, all right? I'm just trying to get you set up here, okay? For those of you on Instagram, you get to see the, uh, the, my shotgun mic here, so, because I'm so far back on Instagram, because I had to try and make everything fit that, and get it out of the way of my regular cameras, so. Any hoot. So if that makes sense, okay, the next thing we want to do then is figure out what do we know about our fretboard from the information that we've just attained. Okay, so A major, right? How many positions of A major pentatonic do you know? Or how many positions of C sharp minor pentatonic do you know, right? Again, these all lead into different areas of practice, but I just want you thinking about this a little bit. So when the music begins and we're going to play, We've got ideas of where we can go that's comfortable for us and what we can do when we get there, which is where the licks come in, right? Which is what we're going to be talking about. So I chose 120 beats per minute because it's kind of middle of the road. Please understand if 120 beats per minute is too fast for you, you can try and use some sort of slowdown program with the jam track I gave you. Um, you know, you might use a metronome or something like that. I'm not trying to play things too fast. I just chose 120 as a nice, nice even um, tempo, okay? So here's what I want to start talking about then. We've got our tempo built, we've got our key decided, we've got the scale and the position decided. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to start selecting notes and groups of notes because really if we think about what is a guitar lick, well the guitar lick is really an idea that gets repeated. That's what a lick is, 
right? If I'm just meandering across the fretboard, I'm not really playing licks. Once I reach somewhere where I start actually repeating, okay, then, um, and hopefully, have you guys seen the, the, the link for the, um, the jam track? Hopefully they've got that up there somewhere to join the Facebook group and grab that jam track so you can use this when we're done. Okay, so anyway, if that makes sense, Gary just asked, Gary Lisbon just asked, that's where you get the jam track is, is from the Facebook group. So uh, Michael or anybody who's out there, if you could post a link to that group, that would be great so they can get that, okay? All right, so we're not doing the hashtag guitar zoom just yet. That's coming a little bit later, okay? So now what I've got to do is I've got to go in here and I've got to, I've chose my position that I'm going to play in on the guitar. Now I'm going to choose the notes and I'm going to choose the organization of those notes. So let me show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is let's just start over here in A minor pentatonic and build something very, very, very basic. So what I'm doing right there, uh, for those of you that can see the other camera, not Instagram, but everybody else, I'm playing 5-2-5-2. Five, two, five, two. Okay, now this is not exciting. I'm just creating something basic. We're gonna keep elaborating on this as we keep going, but let me show you this. So if I'm playing at 120 beats per minute, what I have to decide is with that idea, am I playing here? Or am I playing here? Or... You see? So, and there's a triplet we're going to talk about as well, but that's the first thing you have to understand is anytime you're going to play over something, that tempo that you're given is going to define your abilities. Now, we're going to talk about technique as well in a little bit here, and we're going to actually talk about technique more in uh, next week. But the technique enables you to be able to play this at a particular tempo. Excuse me, at a particular subdivision from that tempo. Okay, so if we think about this as being eighth notes, just hypothetically, then I do this. Okay, let's call that 16th notes, okay? And then, okay, there it is. So moving into that, I could call that then 32nd notes. And what I have to do, what you have to do, is decide where do you need to be for that to happen. Okay, where are you able to do that? At 120 beats per minute, you need to be aware of your abilities or things that you need to work on because as soon as the music starts at whatever tempo it is, you've got to have some ideas of things that you could do. You see? So as I play this, go back here. Here we go. Sorry, I'm going to start over. And then. Again, at this point, it's not exciting yet. We gotta keep changing this. We're not, we're not doing anything exciting, we're just building. So let's talk about technique a little bit. Let's say you wanted to play at the 32nd note, okay, which is the faster one, if we're calling it that, okay? So at the 32nd note, if we wanted to play there, but you're not able to pick that fast, right? So now you decide, okay, I want to learn how to pick better, so I'm gonna practice that. That's wonderful, okay? But let's say you wanted to execute it soon and you haven't developed that yet. What you might do, for instance, is possibly what you're doing is doing pull-offs. Or maybe you like the sound of the pull-off a little bit better. Right? Maybe you like that sound a little bit better and that's what you want to try and work with is, uh, is doing pull-offs. So let's listen to that for a second here. See, or you're picking it. Again, in, in my world, I don't care whether you pick it or, or what we call slur, hammer-ons and pull-offs. I don't care what you do as long as you do it effectively and you have fun with it. That's the most important thing, right? Where sometimes we get caught up in this thing where we're supposed to pick everything or we're supposed to do whatever. You need to figure out what works for you and then where you want to go from there. 
okay? Legato for me is equally, absolutely equally as important as picking. So you just have to decide what it is you wanna do. Uh, now somebody says, are you alternate picking? To play that fast if I'm picking it, yeah, you, it'd be pretty tough to try and do them all down. So I'm definitely alternate picking. Okay, for, for doing that. But again, my point is, is you don't have to pick it. You could, you could do pull-offs and it'd be just fine. Okay, so whatever works for you. So now we understand we've got a tempo, we've got a key, we've got a scale that we want to choose, we've got a position on the fretboard that we're comfortable with, and now we're digging in there. We've chosen some notes. We've chosen a group of four notes, which makes it a little bit boxy right now. We're going to change that in just a second here. Okay, but we've chose four notes and we've decided now with those four notes that we're building a pattern that technically we can either play at a quarter note or excuse me, eighth note, 16 or 32nd note. And we're doing that by hammer-ons, pull-offs, in this case pull-offs, or picking, whatever works for you. Okay, so but these are things you have to think about because when you get in there, you might try and do a lick and you go, well, it doesn't really fit. Well, this is why it's probably not fitting. You need to make sure that you can make this fit. Okay, so... If that makes sense, let's keep going. So the next thing I do then is I'm gonna take those notes and instead of doing the same thing, let's say I'm doing the pull-offs and I'm gonna elaborate the pattern a little bit, okay? Not in any crazy way, but I'm gonna elaborate the pattern. I'm gonna switch to this camera angle. Here we go. So now I'm gonna go like this. Now, as I do that, what you'll notice is I no longer, if I go like this, oh, sorry, I have four notes. If I do this, I now have six notes, okay? That's something that's really important in lick development is sometimes you want a, a guitar lick that fits evenly with the rhythm that's being played, but the problem is, is if you keep playing licks that are always even, things get really old really fast. So sometimes it's nice, yes, the beat is, is in 4-4, four, four, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 is what's going on, and we are playing that subdivision of 8th or 16th or 32nd, but the difference is the grouping of the notes. Instead of grouping 4, I'm grouping 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So see, I'm just doing a pull-off twice here. So that's four notes already, and then doing a pull-off there, that's six notes. So I have, does that make sense? Um, Charles Reading said, still can't find the jam track. It should be there. Somebody just posted a link in the chat. So if you scroll up a little bit, um, you should be able to find it. So uh, my hands are full right now. So hopefully somebody can get that for you, okay? So if that makes sense now, if you listen to it, I'm gonna play four over and over and over so you can hear how it sounds even and normal and less exciting. And then I'm gonna play, and all I'm doing is doubling up on that first string, just keeping things nice and easy, okay? I know I'm playing at the 32nd note level and I apologize if that's a little bit too fast for you, but it sounds cooler. Like obviously there's some, some energy that's built up by playing at that faster speed. When you go, it doesn't really build that speed, that, that energy, so that's why I'm playing at that, at that speed, so at the 32nd note. So, okay, so here we go. Here's the group of four. So here's gonna be the group of six. I gotta keep stopping my audio over there, so I apologize for that. So if that makes sense, it sounds a little more interesting, okay? So because I'm not just playing four over four and everything is nice and I was call it a square or a box, everything is just even and there's nothing exciting happening there, um, you wanna be able to break out of that. Now, in the Rock Licks course that I just made, I do all kinds of different things like this. They're not all fast and they're not all crazy. Some are more classic rock, some are more modern metal. You know, there's all kinds of different things. But for me, and we'll get into this later uh, next week as well, it's not just learning licks, it's learning how to connect them together, 
Okay, that's another thing that's just really, really important. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, please do me a favor, check out the uh, guitar course and see what you think of it. So we're about 20 minutes in. Hopefully you guys got some time because I got all kinds of stuff to talk about and we still have to do that membership giveaway. So I want to give you just a little bit more and then we'll go into that giveaway thing, okay? Because I just want to make sure you got some really good stuff to practice for the next couple of days. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change one of the notes. So instead of just playing straight a major pentatonic here, what I want to do is change up one of the notes so I have a little bit different color, okay? Now, as I change these notes, please understand that maybe you don't know all, you know, anything other than pentatonic and you can't change those notes and that's okay. Again, it's another day of study, no problem, okay? But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, instead of playing five, two, five, two, I'm going to play four, two, five, two. What I'm adding in technically would be called the major seventh, but again, don't worry about that. But by doing that, it's adding a new color, a new sound, an excitement to this. Again, another energy. Instead of just playing that, I'm playing. Now again, there's nothing dramatic happening here. All I did was change one note, but in changing that, listen to the impact that it has. Let me go back. Okay, here we go. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So then what you saw me do is I started combining the, the new pattern with the G sharp in there. I started combining that pattern with the first pattern, right? And then uh, the wizard says, is it okay to start at 60 beats per minute? Absolutely. Start wherever you need to. I always tell people, drop the ego and just get on board. That's what you do with tempo. You just got to get on board. You just got to jump on somehow and start playing. The tempo is an ego thing. We tell ourselves we have to play at a certain speed. We do not. You just have to jump on board. Just find out where you belong and start practicing these things, okay? So as I change that into that, then what I started doing is adding the group of six, right? And notice how I went two groups of the six and then one group of four. And then I went back to, right? Again, just creating. So all of a sudden I get two little licks that become one larger lick. And sometimes when we play multiple licks that connect together uh, with, with kind of a common theme, we often call that a pattern or a sequence. Okay, so that's what's happening here is I'm just developing something else. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on a little bit here. I'm going to show you something else. And then after I do this, maybe we'll do the little, uh, we'll do the, the giveaway, just in case you can't stick around. Uh, the, the people that win, I'm going to announce them at the end before you leave so everybody can hear who the five winners are. Okay, just to make sure that you believe I'm giving away five memberships and I'm not lying to you because I wouldn't do that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take that same idea, but this time what I'm going to do is work on this side. Okay, so now I'm going to play five, seven, four, seven. Okay. I'm going to play those notes. Okay, and start developing something with that. So I could play the usual. Now it's a little bit awkward because I go from this five or this four to this five, right? But what I want to do is build a new pattern. So instead of just going. Like this, what I want to do is go. Now let's count those notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six notes there. So let's listen to this pattern. So again, because I'm playing a group of six, it sounds a bit more unique. Plus, I'm using a different group of notes. Now, at any time, I could go up to C sharp minor, 
do the same idea up here. Okay, let me explain because people are asking about the giveaway. All that's gonna happen in the giveaway is just in a few minutes here, what I'm gonna do is have you wherever you are, wherever you're watching me right now, you're just gonna hashtag GuitarZoom and you're gonna tell me why you want the membership. Okay, that's all you're gonna do. But don't do it yet because we haven't started yet. Okay, so once I do that, all you gotta do is wherever you're seeing me right now, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, it doesn't matter. Wherever you see me, okay, you're going to put the hashtag guitar zoom and tell me why you think the membership would benefit you or why you want the membership, but don't do it yet, okay? So you gotta wait just a bit here. So if that makes sense, here we go. So I've just built this one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, it sounds really cool. I'm not putting way too much work into it, although again, it is at 120 and it might seem a little bit fast and you might have to try something else, okay? We could start developing. I'm gonna make a lick here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm just making this up here. I'm trying to add a little bit of an arpeggio in here. Okay, so what I'm doing, if, I'll show you what I'm doing, I'm just making this up, but I'm going from seven to four, and then five to seven, and then I'm gonna drop down with that little arpeggio right there going four, five, six. And then I'm doing the pull off to four. And even that, you'll notice it's gonna be straight though. If I play that, it's gonna be an even count. So. So again, it's, it's not very exciting yet, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna add in two more notes. So what I'm gonna do is just add in so I'm doing a hammer on from five to seven. See that? And then I'm gonna add in this four again to set me up again. So I have. Now if we think about that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 notes. Okay, that's kind of weird, right? See what I mean? You could make up any kind of thing that you want, depending on what it is that you're looking for. Okay? Uh, another thing I could do, kind of the Zach Wilde thing that's kind of fun to do, I'm gonna move up to C sharp minor, pentatonic, I'm just gonna go that same idea again. But notice how I'm playing this faster. I'm doing that really fast, and then I'm doing those. And you get this kind of Zach Wildey sound. find a better way to shut that off. I wish I had a keystroke to shut that off, but I don't. Anyway, so if that makes sense, you know, the, the thing about licks are when you're playing really slow, and let me just say this to kind of get it out of the way, it's not a slow versus fast thing. Music for me should encompass slow and fast. Dynamics are what makes something sound uh, cool. Okay, if you're playing fast, play slow. If you're playing high, play low. If you're playing loud, play soft. It's those dynamics that really give a solo energy, okay? But understand that if you're playing everything really slow, especially like a, you know, if we were playing a slow blues or something, that might be different. But right now with this track that I have, and again, if you're just joining, the jam track is something that I made this morning for you. You can download it at the Facebook group, uh, the Rocklix Facebook group. Somebody will throw a link in there somewhere and you can download that track if you want to. So understand if I'm doing this, be completely honest with you when you're playing really slow like that licks don't they're not really as effective what you can do at that speed is make a really great melody uh, 
you know, something like that. You could play just nice and slow and make some melody with it. This is meandering, which I'm sure you've heard me talk about. And if you haven't heard me talk about meandering, there's probably about 200 videos on YouTube about it. But anyway, so watch. So when I'm playing slower like that, I'm not playing licks. You know, I don't want... Because it's just, it's not gonna be very effective. What I need to do is get that... I need to get that up a little bit in terms of speed, right? And then what I need to do is do something interesting with it. Maybe I go like this. Right, something like that. So if I'm going... Now it's still straight though, right? We should change that up somehow. So if we went like this... As soon as I start changing up that rhythm, so it's not just a box, it's not just a square. As soon as I do that, all of a sudden it begins to sound a little more interesting and it's not fast. I'm not playing at the 30 second, right, speed. I'm playing it slower, but it still sounds more interesting. So that's what you have to think about when it comes to, you know, what we talked about in the beginning here. So right now what I'm going to do is, I wanna read my notes so Matt doesn't get mad at me here. I wanna make sure I have all my notes uh, let's see here. I'm going to give the signal in just a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just jam for a couple of minutes. And what I want you to do is I want you, when I give the signal, not yet, when I give the signal, what I want you to do is simply wherever you are on social media, put hashtag, which is the pound sign, guitar zoom, and don't hit enter. Put hashtag guitar zoom space and then tell me why it is that you would like the membership and what we're going to do there. Uh, Matt is going to choose five winners or somebody over there is going to, I don't know if it's Matt, I don't know who it is, but okay. So I'm going to give you the signal and then I'm just going to jam a little bit, give you a couple minutes to put in your, my, the signal is, that's a good question, Andrew. The signal is going to be go. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say go. Okay. And then I'm going to jam for a little bit. That should be pretty good. Go is a pretty good signal. Okay, so here we go. And go. Post those hashtags with your why you want a membership. play one more time, give you a little more time.
kind of fun to play. Okay, and you are welcome to continue posting, okay? You're welcome to continue posting those comments, uh, and they'll figure out who the five winners are. Thank you so much. And please remember that at any time, you can click on the link and check out Rock Licks and see if it's something that you are interested in. See if you can up your game in your, in your lick playing, which I think is very, very important. Um, but again, always remembering that the most important thing is, is you figuring out how you're going to approach those. So when you learn a new guitar lick, go through the processes that I've told you about today, right? Figure out what tempo it's at. If you have experience with this, that tempo will already tell you um, what you can and can't do, right? If I'm given a tempo of 160, there are certain things I'm not gonna be able to execute as well as I would have at 130 or whatever it might be. You wanna be aware of some of those things. Or know that if it gets to a certain tempo, and it doesn't always have to be fast, right? Because 160 is like 80. So there are things that you can do thinking about it from the 80 beats per minute perspective. Um, so sometimes as it gets faster, that doesn't just mean everything gets faster. Sometimes it's actually some things that get easier to play. Because 200, you could play things at 100 and you're still fine. Uh, if that makes sense. It's all a mathematical thing, but if that makes sense to you. But that's what you want to be thinking about. The second thing is, is you've defined what key you're in, what scale you're trying to utilize, and most certainly, you know, kind of a, an addendum to that is, is positionally where you're going to go on the guitar with that information. You might need more work on your fretboard, right? And so you've got to try and build that out. Then you start trying to pick some notes to develop an idea, a repetitive idea, which is what a lick is. And then what I always try and tell people is once you've developed that, it's okay to have it be a square, right? Four beats or something like that. But if you try and play with maybe six beats or something like that, it'll actually sound more interesting on the repeat because it's not doing exactly the same thing that the rhythm is doing, okay? In this case, I'm playing in 4-4. Four, four. If I was doing something else, it would be another situation, but oftentimes we're playing in 4-4. Four, four. Next thing that you do is you start changing some of the notes to make it sound a little more interesting, right? Instead of just going... And you see how I can take that idea and build a theme out of that by being able to play one and then play the other, and it makes it more interesting. It doesn't have to be just one or the other. It depends on what I want to try and do, okay? Let's try another one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we could do something like that. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give you a triplet feel. I'm gonna make something else up here. Let me figure out something. Let's try that one, so I'm gonna go. So what I'm doing now, just to show you this. So again, I'm just picking something. So those are my playing, my notes. Okay. And I'm giving it a triplet feel. You see? And I can do that however many times I want. Make sense? Okay. So uh, Top Jimmy says he's got to run. See you later, Top Jimmy. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, okay, so if that makes sense, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today, okay, is basically trying to figure out how you can get started. So once we start learning some licks, you're going to understand that those licks that we talk about can be readjusted. You can play them any way you want. If you want to do legato, if you want to pick them, if you want to play them at 16th note versus 32nd, if you want to change a note of them, you can do any of those kind of things, okay? So what I need to do, though, quick, is I need to see, give me one second here, because I need to see if I can find Matt or the rest of the team and figure out if we have a winner or if they haven't picked them yet. Okay, let me see what I can find. There's, let me see. Oh, look at this. We have winners. We have winners. Okay. Uh, 
From YouTube, we have Skinny Gumbo. From YouTube, we have Mike Cozart. So if you're out there, Skinny Gumbo or Mike Cozart, you're the first two winners. Then we have Matt Bradford from Facebook. And we have Tom Bernard from Facebook. And we have Sophia Marie Herrick from Facebook. I hope I said that right. Okay. So let's see here. Skinny Gumbo, Mike Cozart, if you're out there. Okay. Matt Bradford, Tom Bernard, and Sophia Marie Herrick. Matt Bradford, there you are. Hey, buddy. So Matt Bradford is on the call. And there he is, Matt Bradford. Awesome. Okay, cool. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Hugo says, I never win anything. I know what it feels like. I never win anything either. But remember, we're going to do this on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and next Monday. We're going to be choosing five winners. I do believe that's true. We're going to choose them every live session. So you can win on Monday. You can win on Wednesday. You can win on Friday. Okay, so hopefully that uh, works. Perfect. Oh, there. Look, there's Sophie. Congratulations. Very good. <laughs> okay, cool. So remember, uh, check out the Rocklix course. See if it's something that you're interested in. There'll be a link over there. And join me Monday, same time, same bat channel. We can give away five more uh, winners. That would be awesome. And uh, hopefully you learn something. Okay, so check out the guitar course. See if it's something you're interested in. And remember, get the jam track. Go to the Facebook page. There'll be a link somewhere around here for that too. And grab the... Um, grab the jam track and try these things that we're talking about. Go back and watch this video as many times as you need to, to make it make sense to you. That's the beauty of video, right? You can watch these as many times as you need to. Okay. So, and stay positive, have a wonderful weekend and uh, I'll see you again on Monday. So don't forget 10 AM Pacific Monday. We're going to continue our conversation. All right. So thank you everybody. Take care, have a wonderful weekend and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.